you wanted proof that you can make good quality videos with a really low cost setup, this is it. About a year ago, I posted my first video called How to Make a Low-Cost Lightboard for Online Teaching. I have gained a lot of experience using a lightboard over the past year. I'm not talking about the handful of videos I've uploaded. I'm talking about my actual full-time teaching job has been entirely online for a year thanks to the pandemic. This video is going to have an assortment of lightboard topics that I've learned over the past year. There are timestamps down in the description so that you can jump to specific topics, but this is what I'm going to be talking about. Consumables used, things like how many dry erase markers did I go through? Overlays, I want to direct you to some resources so that you can figure out how to overlay PowerPoint or some other image over the lightboard. Clothing choices, on occasion I find myself accidentally standing behind text. There are certain colors and patterns that make it unnecessarily difficult to still read the text. I want to talk about some upgrades that I would like to make to my setup. I'd like to get an actual reflector so that I don't have to have styrofoam tape to the ceiling above me, even though it keeps falling down. Polarizer on the camera so that I could put a monitor in front of me without dealing with reflection. I'd like some barn doors on the lights at the sides to help with the lighting situation. I also want to talk about some technological problems I had on a couple times during live classes. So after one year of teaching fully online at a full-time job, I completely depleted 30 of these Expo Neon Dry Erase Markers. They come in packs of five. I have five more that are partially used and still going. So 30 to 35 Expo Neon Dry Erase Markers. Windex to clean the board. This bottle, when it was full, contained 32 fluid ounces, which is equal to 946 milliliters. This bottle is now mostly empty. I used most of this giant bottle of Windex. I also went through about three rolls of paper towels. Overlays. It is possible to overlay a PowerPoint or some other image over the lightboard. There are two really cool things about this. One, this does not have to be editing after the fact. This can be done in real time during a live class. Two, this is transparent, so I can actually interact in any way I want, whether it's writing or pointing at things during a live class. Now, I didn't figure out how to do this part on my own, so I'm going to give a shout out to the YouTube user who taught me how to do this. There is another YouTube channel of someone who teaches using a lightboard called Engineering Economics Guy. He has a website, lightboarddepot.com, with tutorials about how to do this type of overlay. He utilizes some free software called OBS that makes this all possible. I'm putting links to both his YouTube channel and his website down in the description below. I'm just going to refer you to his materials if you want to learn how to do this type of overlay. When you're teaching using a lightboard, you want to pay close attention to what clothes you're wearing. If you wear something too bright, you can't see the text. If I wear something with too many patterns, you can't see the text. If I wear something that's too dark, I just look like a floating head with hands. I personally always wear dark grays or dark blues. It's a nice combination of still being able to see the text and not blending into the background too much. One thing that helped improve my image quality was putting a white reflective surface on the ceiling because the ceiling in my basement is dark. However, it's a piece of styrofoam that's not taped up very well. And this happens sometimes put something white on the ceiling, secure it. There are a few upgrades that I would like to make to this setup. The first one that I want to talk about is a reflector. In other words, why do I have white styrofoam tape to the ceiling if it keeps falling down? The answer is to improve the lighting. So, this is me, and I am standing in front of a piece of acrylic glass and writing on it. I'm looking through this acrylic glass at a camera. So camera on a tripod. The side of the room towards the camera is dark. The side of the room on this side of the board where I am is very well illuminated. If there are any lights on the camera side of this board, there is a very bad glare situation. Let me show you. 
So with this new light on, I am illuminated a lot better, but you are probably seeing an annoying glare. What's more annoying is that when I go to write on the board, it moves a little bit. So it probably also moves that glare and becomes really distracting. So my low cost solution was to tape white styrofoam to the ceiling. Why white styrofoam? Because it was white and I had it on hand. The white styrofoam takes light from my two lights at the side and bounces a little bit of it on me so that I can be better illuminated when I'm in the center. However, I want an actual proper reflector above me so that lighting looks better all the time and styrofoam doesn't keep falling off. So while we're on the topic of annoying glares, let's talk about why I want to put a polarizer on my camera. So when I'm teaching a live class and a student unmutes themselves to speak or a student types something in chat, the normal reaction from my perspective is to look at my monitor so that I'm seeing the student. The problem is that my monitor is over at the side. So when I want to look at a student, this is what I'm doing. From the perspective of a student watching the camera feed, this looks really awkward. The problem is that if I put the monitor right next to my camera, you would see that same annoying glare that you saw when there was a light on near the camera. The answer to that is a polarizer. Most monitors are polarized. So if I take another polarizer, put it over the camera, rotate it to the correct orientation, you should see the reflection from the monitor disappear. This would enable me to put my monitor right next to the camera so that when I'm looking at a student or their chat messages, I'm just looking slightly off to the side rather than entirely off to the side. Another upgrade that I would like to get would be barn doors for these two lights at the side that illuminate me. So right now they're just light bulbs. And the problem with this is that their light shines in all sorts of different directions. Now, I want my backdrop to look black. Some of this light is hitting the backdrop. That means that I had to change settings on my camera to make everything look darker so that the backdrop could look black. Barn door would just be a flap that prevents light from going back. If this flap is there, light would no longer be hitting my backdrop. This means I could change camera settings and make everything look brighter, including me, the presenter. I could make it look like I had brighter lights, more expensive lights, with a simple, cheap flap. I want to talk about some of the technology problems that I saw over the past year in live online classes. The main thing is self-updating software and settings being changed. So whether you're using Zoom, WebEx, Microsoft Teams, or whatever platform, I think there's a built-in assumption that the picture you want to send other people is just an image of your face. If it's just an image of your face, that means it's okay. If it's blurry, if it's compressed, if they start messing with the brightness, but it's really not okay. One day last year, I went to start my class and I found that the platform I had been using had self-updated. Everything reverted to default settings, menus changed, Default settings were different than they had originally been. The main problem was that the platform noticed that my image was dark and decided that it needed to up the brightness really, really high. It upped the brightness so high that the text was just completely unreadable. It took me a couple of minutes to find the setting that I needed to change in the software. So I got into the habit of always starting class about 30 minutes early. I would just have a single PowerPoint slide with reminders or updates up on the screen just to give me time early to figure out if I was going to have a problem that day. I don't really have a solution to this other than to say start class early, expect the unexpected. I never knew when this was going to happen, but it was annoying every time it happened. Thanks for watching Chemistry in a Nutshell. If you feel that I've earned it, please like this video and subscribe to my channel. I post weekly videos where I use the lightboard to teach about chemistry and occasional videos about the lightboard itself. But over the next few weeks, I'm going to be making some much needed upgrades to my studio. So keep watching my new videos if you want to see what this looks like after those upgrades.